it's story time. It's I, it has been forever since I recorded one of these. Uh, I know you're like, but Leland, Leland, I've watched one every week. You've dropped one every week. I'm one of the three other people. If that. Who have watched every single one of these. There's four of you and you don't watch to the end. But if you told other people about it and you shared it, then there'd be more people. Yeah, no, I drop them every week, but I don't record them every week. I kind of got a big, I got a really far ahead because I knew I was going to start doing gigs again. And then I did a few gigs and I was going to try to keep uh, keep up during that time. And, I, and I've been falling behind steadily. So today's a story about the boys. That's way too long of an explanation. Yeah, it is. Today's a story about my, the big boys trip to California that I took right before I met my wife. Heading down to California. I lived in Saskatchewan, Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. Uh, me and two other buddies were going to head down. It was, this was, there's three things I was going to do. Three things. This was my plan. One, head down, hang out with the buddies in California. Now I had a bunch of tree planting money. And so I was like, I deserve a trip. But the other thing I was going to do was buy a car. Because there's some cars or some makes of cars that if you buy them in the U.S. And then, you know, you pay the duty, bring them back to Canada, resell it, you make money. And I thought that'll pay for the trip. So it's boom. Ooh, one and two. Third thing was uh, I was going to go down and meet Karen Parsons, uh, who played Hillary on Fresh Prince of Bel Air. I was going to go down and meet her and and probably probably start dating, maybe even get married. Good luck with that. This this is right before I met my wife. So that was the plan. Uh, we drove down. We just drove down. It was uh, it was me and Hanger and Jordan. I'll just say those names. I won't give any last names, first names, so that you know, so that you don't know. Uh, there's gonna be a lot of editing on this. I can tell already. Oh, I don't know. Uh, we drove down. We just drove all night. Like we just kept driving. We just uh, I forget what time we started, but we just drove to the border. Told them what we're doing. They're like, "Come on into America. Get in here, you kids. Spend your money." And then we just kept driving down. And uh, <laughs> I remember along that trip, uh, Hanger was doing a lot of the driving. And I just remember this, this is so funny because uh, we. <laughs> We were driving along, and all of a sudden, he just in the middle, he's like, yeah, I think I'm going to puke. And uh, that's all he said. He wasn't like, oh, I'm starting to feel sick. He was just like, yeah, I think I'm going to puke. Real calm. Next thing you know, he was like, yeah, no, I'm going to. And he just pulled over calmly, got out of the vehicle. I'm like, what's going on? In the middle of the night, because we were driving all night. And he just gets on the side of the road and was like, <laughs> he's just puking on the side of the road. And that was it. Then he walked back in. I think he jumped in and was like, wait, and then just kept driving. That is hardcore. I just never forget how calm and cool he was. It wasn't like a Ford, Chevy, or Dodge pickup truck, but it was a pickup truck. I think it was like a, like a Nissan or something like that. Irrelevant. Uh, the other thing was I, I was passing this cop. I'm driving. When I was driving, one of the shifts that I was driving, and I'm passing this highway patrol, and Hanger kept saying, cop, 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 cop. And I was like, what? As I'm passing this cop, he's like, you're speeding and you just passed a cop. And I was like, oh, crap. So then I just slowed down. <laughs> just without hitting the brake, I just eased off till I slowed down. And then he slowly passed us again. And then I was like, and then I pulled off the side. That's the two things of note on the way down. Wow. How nice is that, that sounds amazing. Yeah. Uh, we got as far as Vegas. It was a Saturday. Basically, we got to Las Vegas at 5 o'clock. We're heading down to Hollywood, down to L.A. That was the plan. But we're going to have a night in Vegas. And uh, I'm telling you, Saturday night in Vegas. It doesn't get much better than that. You know, we were staying at the Sands Hotel because that was still a building then that wasn't torn down. I was pretty excited because Nat King Cole had recorded some stuff at the Sands Hotel this very same building. So I was like, it was historic for me. I was excited. Love me some Nat King Cole. Quick nap, and then we'll hit the town. This is going to be fantastic. Vegas, Saturday night. It's going to be awesome. And um, then we all woke up the next morning. Uh, we slept through the night. Just completely just like, yeah, it's going to be great. We'll get it. We'll just have a quick nap. And then we're just... Well, it's funny that you should say that because... That's how I feel. So then we were like, oh, I guess we'll do Sunday night in Vegas. Um, and then I actually went to some car dealerships and I started looking for this specific car that I was going to buy there with my money and then turn around and sell it when I got back. And that was going to pay for the trip and then some. And 
Uh, I took it to a mechanic, and he was like, uh, I was like, what do you think? Is anything wrong with this car? And he's like, don't buy this car. <laughs> he was basically, I told him what I was planning on doing, and he's like, I don't think it's going to make it to Canada. I don't know. Then I think it was Jordan that said to me, he's like, just stop worrying about a car. I think I wasted their afternoon looking for this car and looking for cars. And I, here's the problem. I didn't do enough research on which cars to buy. It, it's just, it was kind of like me in school. I just, I, I researched, but I didn't do proper research. You're lazy. So I just kind of skimmed over like, yeah, that's a pretty good car. That year, that, yeah, yeah I'm fine. Because we didn't have the internet back in those days. Couldn't just Google it. Like, what's the best car to make money in Canada after, after duty? Duty. <laughs> that was, there was one make of car that I could make money on for the price range that I had. <laughs> and after that, I was like, I guess I'm just, I'm just going to run out of money for college next year. <laughs> and it's all about this trip. But there's a higher purpose here, Karen Parsons and me. So let's just, let's focus on that then. If I can't get the car, I can at least get Karen. <laughs> I can get Hillary Banks. Uh, so we went out on Vegas. It was fun. We had a night, we went to, went to see a comedy show. Anyway, after Vegas, Monday night we got into LA and then we went to this like CD hotel near uh, Hollywood Boulevard. Like just seedy, seedy. It was not a good area of town, and uh, that's where we stayed for the rest of that week. Like first, we want you know you, you do the tourist thing. You walk, uh, we go to Santa Monica Boulevard and check out the pier. You go to Hollywood Boulevard and and uh, you get you know you see the star, the Walk of Fame, see the stars, uh, Chinese Man Theater. I don't know what it's called now. I think it's Kodak Theater or something like that. But uh, so we did all the touristy things, and that was fun. Uh, I got my picture taken by uh, the star of Nat King Cole. Like I said, I was a huge fan of Nat King Cole. He's amazing. And uh, so I got that, that picture taken. So we went to a taping of Family Feud, uh, which maybe it's better now, but it was horrible. So boring. This is before Steve Harvey's. Yeah, so I'm assuming he would keep people entertained and be better. But half the audience, it was barely full in there. It was half the audience left. They had prizes at the end and fairly significant prizes and they did it at the end so you would you'd have to stay to the end before they did the draw and it was like oh that's because everybody hates this because it's really boring you should try that hanger really wanted to go to prices right uh but it was the off week that they were shooting prices right right so we couldn't go to that he's he was a mega fan at one point in time we were tree planning there's like 15 us 15 of us packed into a hotel room we just had sleeping bags slept on the floor just lined it up and uh, in the morning, somebody had turned on TV, half of us were sleeping, and Price is Right came on. Exactly like that. And Hanger jumped up and started dancing. This is before we went to on this trip. This is just how I know he loves Price is Right. He got up there and he's like, da -da -da -da. Da -da 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 -da. <laughs> like he was, he literally was dancing. <laughs> Like he had just woke up and heard the music and jumped up and started dancing. He loved the show that much. <laughs> I just remember it stuck in my head. Because <laughs> he does it's not like he danced at other things. I've never seen him show that much that much emotion before. <laughs> so uh, he really wanted to go to that, but we we had to settle to with uh, Family Feud and it was boring. <laughs> <laughs> but then we got some tickets to go see the Fresh Prince of Bel Air. Yeah, here's where it all my plan comes together. <laughs> and we got in there. First of all, there's a limo that passed by as we were in the lineup, and we're all like, "That's probably Will Smith or Karen Parsons." Hello, Hillary Banks. And uh, yeah, all she has to do is meet me. And we'll probably start dating, at the very least. Probably get married. You're delusional. So uh, we go to the taping, and, and actually, uh, Will Smith actually came out. Normally they have, I mean, I didn't know a lot about the business then, but normally they have like a, some guy just warm up. You know, they got a warm up guy. Getting the crowd ready to go. But Will Smith came in and was just talking to people. He's like, hey, where are you from? And uh, we're from Canada, obviously. We came the furthest. And so we, you know, it was going to be exciting when he got to us. But he asked a few people, he said, anybody else from further away than that? It was, I don't know, like Pennsylvania or something. And the guys, Hanger and Jordan, are like, Leland, Leland, tell him. Why is it up to me to tell him? You guys can say we're from Canada. Do you know what I mean? 
because uh, it was one of my favorite shows. That's why they were kind of bugging me. You chickened out, didn't you? Uh, it was the episode where Hillary got a job as a weather girl. That was the episode we were there for. And uh, so she was pretty focused. It was a pretty big, pretty big episode for her. So maybe that's why she didn't didn't want to date me. So that was that was the trip. We drove all the way back again. Um, it was good times. Good times. We had a great trip. And maybe it was for the best that I didn't end up dating uh, Karen Parsons. Well, that next week when we got home and I saw the girl of my dreams working at GMG Jewelers, I said, I'm going to ask her out. And because of how Karen Parsons ignored me, I found the love of my life. <laughs> that's a pretty that's a pretty good ending. Like I just made that up now, but that's pretty good. I don't know, man. That's, maybe there's some truth to that. She didn't ignore me. I just never talked to her. How would I get to talk to her unless I... This has gone on way too long.